Okay. So, uh, Dr. Wilson, thank you for uh, bringing to do the interview. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a psychologist, and I want to get a sense of the degree to which the disciplines of psychology and psychiatry are inherently limited by their, uh, the racism and white supremacy that drives many of the theories. Well, uh, I guess I'm look, I would look at the fields of psychiatry and psychology in the context of the total system that we are in. And we are in, in my view, a system, local, national, global, of racism, white supremacy, which people who classify themselves as white consciously and or subconsciously organized in my analysis for their genetic survival on the planet. Do, do you see? And that's what the system of racism and white supremacy is. So within that frame, uh, the fields of psychology, the field of education, the field of psychiatry is within that frame. And so the frame is for whites, their survival. And so they're not going to analyze it so it falls apart. And so I say that's its limitations. But for black people uh, and maybe other people of color, mm -hmm. we have to have an analysis and understanding of racism, white supremacy, for us to be able to function effectively. So in other words, people will call me, well, what school can I, you know, I want to be a psychiatrist. Where can I go to get training in the area of what you're talking about? Well, there's not any place. I don't know of any psychiatric uh, program, training program, where the focus is on racism. Uh, I don't think that there's a single place in the United States, probably not in the world. And this is understandable because, again, we're in the power context of racism and white supremacy. Okay. Okay. The, 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 it seems like, given the history of psychology, and psychiatry as an instrument to verify the inferiority of African descent people, that to use that same science to understand the behavior and to treat African descent people uh, would be unethical. Uh, how, how do we find a psychology or a psychiatry that's appropriate for, for black people? Well, I, I would hope that uh the work that I have done is leading in that direction, meaning that you start with an analysis. I would, well, I won't say that I started out for that goal objective. I started out uh, looking for what was making black people mentally ill and just focused on racism and then the need to understand and I still am in that position. In other words, it is racism, white supremacy as a global system that is responsible for everything that is happening to us. Now the system itself is not gonna focus in that direction. And we have to be courageous and self-respecting enough so that those of us who are in the field you see, I would say those who are in education in any field, working with black people, we have to focus on what is the problem that we're facing and have faced for 500 years. And that brings us to an understanding of racism, white supremacy, in my view. Now, in the context of education, you mentioned several times, it seems to me that if we're not careful, much damage can be done uh, to our children and adults in terms of the kind of education they're getting that reinforces white supremacy and racism? Well, I would say absolutely. I mean, the system is not structured for the maximal development of the black genetic and constitutional potential. 
I mean, this is what we're told. We're told to believe this is a democracy and everybody's equal, everybody has an equal opportunity. But I say that that's a myth. I mean, it may be somebody's goal, but that's not what exists. What exists is a system of, of racism, white supremacy, which is for white survival and for the inferiorization of black people. And this is what we have had for 500 years. Mm. Okay. So we have to decide, uh, and I say that the goal objective, we can't just ignore racism, white supremacy. It's here. It is the power context. And so we have to move so as to replace the system of racism, white supremacy with a system of justice. That's the work that we have to do, and in the process, making the decision or determination that we are going to maximally develop ourselves. But the system has no intention to do that, and it would be antithetical to white genetic survival to maximally develop black people. Okay, can, can you give me an example for, if someone comes to you looking for, for uh, treatment and they are presenting as the problem that perhaps the stress of work, um, family stress, distinction amongst them and their, their, their spouse, uh, how do you help them to see how white supremacy is impacting their life? Well, let's just take male-female relations where um, black people make the assumption that we are in a democracy, and so all we have to do is just what everybody else is doing. And I say because of the dynamic of racism, and racism can determine whether there's going to be employment, who's going to make the most money, is it going to be the father or going to be the mother, the wife or the husband. And the system, by and large, says the female is going, the black female, is going to have more opportunity in many instances than the male. So that throws everything off. <laughs> and people start fighting with each other and because they don't understand that the system is determining this. So by helping people to understand that at some point in the treatment process, you know, when it's relevant to do that, <laughs> to help them understand that uh, this is the dominant force that is in the relationship. It's not the two people. It's the dominant force that is doing certain things to those two people so that more likely than not they will have failure rather than a success. Now if they understand that, then they can begin to understand, well, what do we need to do in order to oppose this? But if we don't oppose it, it's going to, if we don't recognize it, and if we don't oppose it, it is still going to be the biggest destructive force in our lives and the lives of our children and their children until okay. we bring it to an end. Can, can you just, last question, if you'd be so kind as to kind of present or review the major tenets of your theory uh, as laid out in the ISIS papers and perhaps any revisions you've made to them? Well, basically, um, racism is a system for people who classify themselves as white once they realized that they were a tiny minority on the planet and that they were genetic recessive. The majority of the people on the planet, black, brown, red, and yellow, are genetically dominant to white people. In other words, if you mix white and black, you're going to get a colored person, not another white person. And because they are minority and genetic recessive on this particular planet, where the majority of people are people of color, if they're going to genetically survive, they have to be in charge. They have to be able to control everybody. They have to be able to kill at will. And this is what we are experiencing. Basically, uh, a system that is interested in its genetic survival and is fearful of other people being genetically dominant to itself then the logical outcome is genocide. You see, white genetic survival necessitates genocide 
for black and other people of color. And this is what we have happening.
sit here in this chair right here. Uh, let me make sure. Uh, one second. 